What's going on everybody out there and welcome back to another episode of the Dark Avenger comic book review. The show where I share my thoughts on all the comics I read last week. And last week I read a grand total of 15 comic books. I swear, <clears throat> each and every episode, the number of comics I read grows more and more and more. We actually have a number one this week. I'm super excited to talk about that. But before we get into this week's books... I really quickly want to, as always, talk about things that are coming up. Number one, I actually did get uh, something really cool. I'm sure all of you saw this in the Dan Didio video. I never had a chance to really show it off. I am going to be sharing a picture on Instagram if I haven't already. I ended up getting my hands on the Action Comics 1000 Superman, which is the first time he's back in the red trunks since New 52. <laughs> so... Really happy to have that. Um, this is one of the only ones I really wanted. I mean, there is still the metal, or not, no, the Unchained Superman and the Superman from the animated series. McFarlane's line of, of figures is amazing. I recommend them. There's a couple of Batman ones as well, but this is the Superman I really wanted. <clears throat> and as you all have already seen through Instagram, the review station's back, so I might actually do a highlight of this figure uh when I take it out. But for right now, I'm leaving him here. We're going to leave him in the background. <clears throat> Beautiful figure, though. Also, uh, I mentioned on Twitter, I'm going to mention it here, and then we're going to move on, I promise. Big things are going to be coming from the next several weeks on this channel, on Twitch, and through social media. So I hope all of you are around. This is going to be a fun ride for myself, for all of you. And I am working on a project now, I told you all, I'm not doing anything new <clears throat> this year. All I am working on is building on what already either exists or existed and working on building that series up. This is a series that I did in the past that I haven't done in a while that I'm working on retooling, redoing, and building on in the coming months. This is something that's going to take a little bit of time to work out. A little bit of time to figure out once I figure it out it could be this month it could be next month it could be the month after it won't be that much further than that it'll take a month or two at the very most but there's going to be something returning right here on Dark Avenger C86 very very soon <clears throat> other than that keep an eye on Twitch there's something going on with chaos it's gonna be some fun times there and I am doing an unboxing video this week this week I have a few really big things that I'm working on that is one of them. So look forward to an unboxing video. And that video, I'm looking to reach out to the people I'm unboxing this from. And I'm looking to build upon that even further moving forward on Twitch. So again, this is all connected all around. And as always, if you want to keep an eye on everything I'm doing, plus get exclusive written posts, check out shootingstaruniverse.com. I am almost done with the comic review. I know last week I told you all I was going to uh, have it posted up. Tommy ended up getting sick and staying home the second half of the week. So while I did almost finish the article, unfortunately I had to stop writing it because I had to take care of Tommy. He had the flu and as you all know, there's a lot of fright going around right now. So when Tommy had the flu, I focused a lot of time on him. So uh, the post will be this week because Tommy is 100% better going back to school the full week. And I'll have more time to write that. I have another article that I, another post that I'm working on. So there's a lot of really awesome stuff. And as always, links in the description below, social media, other channels, other, uh, my Twitch channel, and the Discord. And that is four minutes and a half of an intro. Let's talk comic books. This week, like I said, I had 15 books. However, two did not come out this week. The first two we're talking about, one is a cornerstone to our before we get into this week's books and another one I'm super excited to talk about we're going to talk about that one first so in reality 13 books from this week the week of February 26 2020 the last week of February the second month of 2020 going into March super exciting times camera issues aside like I was about to say first book that we're going to be talking about in this review is like father like daughter Issue number five, I've been excited to read this book ever since Kat was talking so much about it. She was super excited to get this book out, and here we finally are. Last issue ended with Casey watching her father, invulnerable, not being so invulnerable and getting shot. This issue, we find out that there is an agency, a Russian agency, looking to get their hands on invulnerable. And we jump, there's a conversation in the beginning of the book 
We jump back to Casey bringing her father back to his house. Really good dialogue back and forth between Casey and Invulnerable. I love the dynamic that they're throwing in here where Casey thought he was just the biggest jerk ever. And now she's slowly finding out that he's just being, he's just a superhero. His apartment isn't like, ex, you know, extravagant like she thought it was. It was plain. It was quiet. It was boring. Only had one picture and it was of him holding her as a baby. And you're starting to see her realizing this and you're starting to see them bond. And he, we find, she finds out he's a writer and he has all these books and he's going to give them to her to read. And then unfortunately it gets late and there's, one panel in this book that I have in my mind as a dad and as as parents out there, you know this pouty face. So after all this dialogue happens, <clears throat> you know, it gets late. So he says, you know, you better go home before your mother notices you're gone and starts to ask questions. And she gives the pouty face of, I really don't want to. And he's like, don't worry. I'm a superhero. I'll heal. I'll be fine. <clears throat> you need to go home. And she's like, fine, but we're coming back. I'm going to redecorate this place at some point. Um, so it was, it was a good exit. So she goes home and she starts to have this weird vision about her dad, possibly about certain other things. And we also find out that the agency, that Russian agency, is now at Invulnerable's house and they're about to attack. Casey, after having a really bad dream, ends up going to her friends to look for some advice, to talk to them about things that she thinks are going to happen to her dad, things she's worried about jump back to her dad and actually bad things do happen. And then in my opinion, we get one of the greatest cliffhangers ever. This is go this is my favorite issue of like father, like daughter thus far. If you're looking for me to tell you about this last page, I will when issue six comes out, because this is a book you definitely have to check out. The cliffhanger was so worth it. The it's, it's a twist. It's an amazing twist that you definitely have to read it to find out. So Like Father, Like Daughter, issue number five, I loved it. Good art, amazing story. Definitely check out the five issues that come out of Short Views. You reach out to Cat Comic Uno at any point. You can check out shortviews.com to get all five issues. There's a trade that's coming out as we speak. So look forward to all of that with Like Father, Like Daughter. Moving on, we have Argo 5, issue number 33, the cornerstone of any Dark Avenger comic book review when it comes to Argo 5. Argo 5 currently has 30 seven issues either out or the 37th issue is being pro is being finalized i apologize again dan i know we just talked about this i completely forgot <clears throat> but pending 37 issues so far god bless argo 5 37 issues dan has been doing an amazing job with the series and this issue starts a three issue arc this is the first time ever that argo 5 not only has it to be continued in this issue but there is another to be continued coming in issue number 34. And I'm super excited. I, I'm really hoping to get my hands on issue 34 and 35 as soon as possible. This issue focuses on Blue Dynamo. Blue Dynamo opens up the issue just being a normal person, going to the movies with his friends, watching a movie that takes place in a galaxy far, far away. Wonder, wonder what movie that was. But uh, he ends up getting abducted. And Argo 5 goes looking for him. And then you have guest appearances. And I got, I got to say, um, I'm just going to throw it out there. Brant, myself, and Mike end up guesting in this book. You'll have to read the book to find out where we guessed. And I will say this, what my character did in that book, I'd never do in reality. And it was, and I'm just going to say that. But anytime I guessed in Dan's book, I'm honored. I believe this is the second time that myself and Michael were put in his book. I believe it's Brant's first time. I could be wrong. He might have been a previous issue, and I'm just not remembering at the moment. But it's always an honor to be in Dan's book. I got, I got to say it off the bat. And I love how when Argo 5 splits up to go looking for Blue Dynamo and they go into all these places. One is a bayou. One is a comic shop. One is like Best Buy. And they're all looking in all these weird places. And then we find out that he's been abducted by these people who want to know more about his gauntlets and how to get the power out of them. And after a long back and forth, he admits that the gauntlets aren't where the power is. The gauntlets just help me focus the power. The power is in myself and he just explodes and, and he goes to attack. And then for some reason, the woman has a bazooka slash big, big gun, big, big gun, and is able to take Blue Dynamo out. But because of that outburst of power, Argo 5 is able to finally track him. Unfortunately, by the time they get there, it's too late. 
And we find out that those people that abducted him weren't people, they were aliens. Possibly the aliens from whence he got his powers in space. They use him as a battery and they literally hyperdrive off, but not before hitting Gladiatra, sending her careening from space all the way back down to Earth. What's next? How is Argo 5 going to find Blue Dynamo? Are they going to bring him back? Oh my god, the artwork's amazing, the story's amazing. I love Argo 5. I'm really happy that this is a, a, a Blue Dynamo-centric uh, arc. I love Blue Dynamo, so I'm really interested in seeing where this goes. I'm surprised they didn't take Kasira to, to with them to the theaters. because um, They didn't work out, though. They, she wanted to date him, and then it didn't... I don't know. I feel like there's there's something there between the two of them. Maybe, maybe we'll see it someday. But, man, oh, man, I'm, this is a cliffhanger that I'm glad that more issues are already out because if I was left on a cliffhanger for this till the next issue was ready to come out... Oh, man. So I'm hoping to get my hands on issue 34 as soon as possible because this is amazing. I'm really excited to see this first ever three-part story arc out of Argo 5. Definitely check it out. If you have the ability, go check out ArgoComics.com. That's A-R-G-O Comics. Dot com. You can check out all the books there. You can go to IndiePlanet.com and find them. Dan's already released two trades. So if you haven't read Argo 5 at all yet, you can check out the first trade and the second trade and have the first, I believe it's the first 10 issues. So you can have the first 10 issues in trade. I'm getting all the Argo 5 in trade as the trades come out because as, as much as I love having the single issues and I do have all the single issues, I do also like to have a nice book to display on a shelf. So Argo 5, definitely check that out. Definitely don't forget to check out Like Father, Like Daughter as well. Two amazing books by two friends that I consider like family. And I, I got to admit, I have amazing friends that have amazing talents who write amazing stories. So... Moving on now, we're going into the 13 books that were released this week. And this book I decided to give a chance to because it has Area 51 in the title. And you all know how I feel about aliens and ghosts. From Xenoscope Comics, Conspiracy, Area 51, issue number one, miniseries. And it starts off now, you all remember the Twitter thing where it was like, we're going to raid, you know, we're going to go to Area 51. We're going to force our way in. And we're going to force them to tell us the truth about aliens. Well, this book... Starts up with this big, humongous crowd of people partying and getting ready to Naruto run. Yes, they use that term in the book. I hope that Funimation uh, doesn't go after them for that. Anyway, and they're getting ready to storm Area 51, and then we turn out. It turns out it's all publicity stunt. They all go away. However, one person in the crowd walks away with something more: IDs to get into Area 51 for himself and two of his friends. So they're gonna invade. Area 51, kind of, but not the way advertised. So they get in. Long story short, they get in. And they start to snoop around and they find things. They find UFOs. They find all these weird little files. But then they start to find really weird stuff. The deeper they go down the rabbit hole, the deeper things get crazy. And I'm not going to spoil anything. I, I think this is a book that definitely, if you are a person who's interested in Area 51 and you're a Xenoscope reader, you're going to want to read this book. But they get to the deepest part that they can, and they're being followed by this masked, it looks like vigilante possibly. We don't know yet. Uh, but <clears throat> obviously one of them does something stupid, pulls out her phone. She wants to start taking pictures. He's like, why did you bring this? We have IDs. This is Area 51. This is the Air Force. This is the Army. You taking this phone out have already blown our cover. He smashes the phone, says, let's go before we get caught. They might have been. But they get to this last room where there's this guy in there in an operating room. And he goes running out because they've unlocked the door. They let him free. And he goes to a phone to try to call his wife. And that's when the vigilante shows up. And everything fades to black to be continued. I'm very interested in seeing where this goes, if aliens will be involved uh, at all, and, and how this will play out and impact the Xenoscope you, so to speak. So uh, I, I'm definitely hooked for the next issue. I want to see where this goes. If this is a lot of just talk and... and uh, we'll see where... Issue 2, I feel, is going to determine whether I'm going to stick with the series until end or whether the second issue is going to kind of deter me. I think that's going to be my deciding point because this was a good intro. This was a good first issue, a start. I really want to see where they're going uh, moving forward. But first Xenoscope book on the review in a while. So I'm very happy to finally have an issue number one to talk about from Xenoscope. <clears throat> moving on, we have Batman Superman issue number seven. Now I've got to start this off with the artwork jarred me <coughs> a little bit. 
it's not horrible, but if you've been reading Superman, Batman, Superman for the past six issues, six issues, I could talk. You'll know that the artwork was pretty much, it was consistent at least with all of the issues. This art was a bit off and it took me a little bit to get used to it. So Batman and Superman are doing their own thing. <clears throat> and then long story short, they get attacked by Ray Shao Ghoul, who is attacking with a kryptonite sword because of Zod. And we find out that Zod has taken the Bottle City of Kandor to the one place in the DC Universe where people bring things to bring them back to life. The Lazarus Pit. In Marvel, there are it just death is not dead because you have ways of cosmically bringing people back. In DC Comics, it's the Lazarus Pit. If Alfred's not real is if Alfred really is dead, that's how you're gonna bring him back. That's how Jason Todd was brought back. I'm surprised Superman wasn't brought back that way, but he was, and he was brought back through a rebirthing matrix, and uh, let's hope that DC hasn't retconned that yet. But anyway, so Superman, Batman, and Ra's shall Ghul now have teamed up to stop Zod from getting to the Lazarus Pit to resurrect the Bottled City of Kandor, because in resurrecting, during the resurrection process, when you first come back, you're, you're a little crazy, now imagine a populace of an entire city with Superman's powers at this size is going to be like coming back to life. So they get there, they have a bit of an, a yelling argument back and forth, and we find out that Zod already put the entire city in the Lazarus Pit as they all rise. And Zod is so excited, but Superman, Batman, and Rachel Cool are not super excited because they know what's coming next. Other than the artwork taking me a little bit out of the book, the story itself, very interesting and a nice little breather from the Batman who laughs because we all know that that's going on uh, in the background as well. I definitely have been enjoying Batman Superman. It is the only Superman book that I'm reading currently. Um, and uh, it has a really nice Batman, a nice Superman Batman feel from before. It's just, again, the artwork is a bit off. So while following in continuity with Batman and Superman's title, it's struggling while still continuing its story. And it's doing a really good job of that. I, I've been enjoying Batman Superman a lot. Continuing on with Batman, let's talk about Detective Comics 1020. The return of Two-Face. Two-Face is back in Gotham and he's been shot. And he has a bullet that's stuck in him. And Batman finds out that Two-Face is back and he's been shot. And something's wrong with Two-Face. Clearly something is going on. Every time he flips the coin, instead of him being both Harvey Dent and Two-Face, if he flips the coin and it lands on heads, he's Harvey. If he flips a coin and it lands on tails, he's Two-Face now. Very weird. And is this because of the bullet? Is the bullet affecting him in some way? I don't know, but I know the book ends with Two-Face opening up his own underground church against Batman. The Church of Two-Face. I do dig the, co the, the suit that Two-Face is wearing. I do like the artwork in Detective Comics. I'm just curious where this arc is going, per se. Is this Batman trying to save Two-Face? Is Two-Face causing an issue? Where are we going here with Detective? I guess we'll find out in the next issue. So that's really all I can say about Detective. I did like the art. I love the artwork. Story's interesting. I just don't know where exactly we're going. Unlike Batman Curse of the White Knight issue number seven of eight. We're at the penultimate issue. I can't believe we're at the penultimate issue already. But Batman comes out to Gotham and tells Gotham... Batman is Bruce Wayne. I love how Barbara's fighting through her um, being... I don't even think she ever was disabled. I think she was just hurt really badly. And uh, she's powering through it. And I love how there's a possible relationship, maybe, between Harley and Batman. There are certain... I don't know if it's a, like, you know, just really close friends. Because, you know, they've been at, end, at odds with each other for so many years. And, you know, there was that moment with Joker, or maybe there's something more developing between the two of them. 
I don't know. It'd be interesting if we got a volume three and Catwoman got involved in this. But anyway, Batman comes clean to to does he comes out. He reveals that he's Bruce Wayne to Gotham. He knows that uh Azrael's coming. He reaches out to Gotham to stay, you know, to fight alongside of him, and then he says I'm not above the law just like none of the other other villains I fought are above the law. When this is all done, when Asriel's done, I will be turning myself in to the police. I will be turning myself over. And um, I love how because of all the death caused by Asriel, Nightwing even says, we're taking him in to justice, right? Batman doesn't kill. You're not going to be killing this guy. And if you remember, it's because of him that Jim Gordon's dead. It's because of him that a lot of stuff has gone on in this in this arc. And Batman just says, We're, I'm not promising anything at this point. Batman doesn't kill, but um, at this point, Azrael killed. And at this point, he's going to be willing to kill. We'll see if he does it in the last issue with a final conflict. But this was a very strong setup for the final issue. I really liked it. Barbara's back in the Batgirl suit. Nightwing's in it. And it's just... It's insane. I'm I'm loving it. I'm I'm very excited to see how this arc ends. I hope we get another sequel. It's this line of Batman is amazing. It comes out of the Black Label, by the way, DC Black Label. So this is a book that should have been on in an oversized print. The the giant size. I would have loved to have seen the art and the story in such a giant um, scale. But regular scale. Do love Curse of the White Knight. You definitely should be reading this arc. Dial H, issue number 12, the grand finale, originally meant to be a six-issue story arc, <clears throat> was allowed to become a maxi-series, a full year's worth of Dial H. We're at issue number 12, <clears throat> the finale. And Miguel rebonds with himself. <clears throat> They're able to stop Mr. Thunderbolt. They're able to trick Mr. Thunderbolt. They're able to send him away save the world and they still have the dial h and they're now in <clears throat> metropolis and there was a lot of dialogue i think the story was concluded amazingly now i haven't reviewed all of this as you all know the past half a year i've been away so basically most of this series had gone on in that six months uh that the dark avenger review hasn't been around this was a very strong conclusion i think everyone should pick up dial h it's been an amazing 12 issue run Definitely, um, I believe it ended on a high note. Definitely open to another mini, possibly in the future, or maxi in the future. Uh, in a way, I'm glad it's not an ongoing, because this way we got our story. Story's done. Move on. Go to another arc, maybe. Set something else up for Dial H. Start again. Definitely amazing series. If you haven't read it from Wonder Comics, get Dial H. You will not be sorry. Dial H was an amazing 12-issue arc maxi series whatever you want to call it and it is the only one of the few minis out of wonder comics that i enjoyed well actually it's the only mini uh, maxi out of wonder comics all so anything else is uh young justice which did not come out this week mighty morphin power rangers 48 did however and mighty morphin power rangers issue number 48 there is a scene in this book that i feel was very strong and i want to talk about that first it was in the middle of the book where Jason is now healed and he's just in the hologram room kind of training and Tommy walks in and he's like, you know, sparring with the program I learned isn't as good as sparring one-on-one -on -one with somebody, you know, in reality. And he's like, Are you you want to spar? Let's go. And they morph Omega Red and the White Tiger and they fight. And I love how Tommy is still mad at Jason for what he, Trini, and Zach were doing. But Jason said, you know, I was told i was not allowed do you know how much it hurt not to tell people i considered like family my close friends zordon all of you nothing how i was forced to protect you i couldn't tell you anything and to protect the morphing grid i was not allowed so i'm sorry if i made the choice to not tell all of you and go off and do this to protect all of you you know, if I had my way, I wanted to tell all of you. And if you think I didn't want to tell all of you and hid this for my own, you know, purposes, then you really don't know me. And he storms off. That was a strong part in this book. Strongest issue. Uh, part of the issue. And then we find out that Billy's worried about the others. So he goes to, I forgot what her name was, but we knew her from beginning, beginning. And she actually has a friend in space because Aisha, Adam, and Rocky are with Trini and Zach in space. 
and they get attacked by that being that's all powerful and lo and behold the ranger slayer kimberly apparently she <clears throat> she is still in the main ranger verse and she comes in saves the rangers ends that other being completely and he's happy about it because he's always wanted his life to be you know done because he knew he was going to do bad things and i loved with trini she's like love the new costumes love the omega thing if you ever are looking for pink let me know that was kind of funny i kind of laughed at that <clears throat> but anyway um she is going to help now zach and trini and the others get back to um their headquarters and stop the blue the blue omega ranger who's now released every single prisoner and believes destroying the rangers and the morphin grid is going to bring peace to the galaxies yeah she's lost it but jason makes the choice that he's going to go back as well uh even though the you know they he's not healed he's not ready he says what would you do zordon you swore to protect earth no matter what I made that same vow. I need to do the same thing. And I, I just loved it. I, I'm really excited to see where this all, you know, how this all culminates. Will Trini, Zach, and uh, Jason end up staying Omega? Will they stay in the out, you know, in the outer grid somewhere? Are we going to get an ongoing about that? Because we know Gogo is ending. I believe Gogo is ending right after this arc. Will we get an Omega series possibly? That would be interesting. Or a 12 issue maxi series even would be interesting. For the Omega Rangers, you know, continuing their adventures, possibly. Who knows? I'd be interested. Um, also, there was a nice moment with Adam and Zack. And I, I like that it kind of played into Adam a bit. Because if you remember the movie, the Power Ranger movie, Adam was always kind of struggling as the Black Ranger. And I think Zack gave him amazing uh, advice in this book. Definitely something to check out. Going into Vertigo, DC Vertigo, or I believe DC Vertigo has now just gone into DC Comics. I don't know anymore. DC separates, then puts back together, and the Books of Magic, issue number 17. So we don't know this at first, but we find out later on that um, Tim is uh, asleep. And uh, he doesn't know this, but he's being attacked by this darker version of himself. And he wants to use one of Tim's magical books to basically get all the power and destroy the world, so to speak. So Tim ends up going into this into this place and locks himself in there. And it's like a, a winter kind of version of the world. And he won't leave because he's afraid if he leaves, that thing is going to come with, that being is going to come with him. And it's up to his teacher and her um, superior to save him. And at first, you know, he's there and she thinks he's dreaming. You know, he says, she says, are you sure you're awake? And he's not, he says, yeah, I'm awake. What do you mean? I'm right here. I'm right now. And I love how her superior goes back to the realm, to the real, to the real world, out of that realm and into the real world. And we find out that Tim is in fact sleeping and stuck in this dream state. So what's going to happen next? And there's a lot of crazy dark stuff going on. Uh, I'm giving you a real briefie because again, I haven't reviewed books of magic for so long. I feel like I'm giving you just such a small piece and um, so much has gone on in Books of Magic the past couple of months. And they did have a small break uh, in between. But I've, I've loved Books of Magic. It's one of my favorite DC Vertigo books, now DC only. Um, I have the first trade. I'm waiting for the second one. I might actually grab the second one soon. Uh, I'm reading this book digitally and then grabbing the trades instead. But it is worth a read. It is amazing. One of my favorite books out of the Dream, out of the Sandman verse. I can say it is out of the Sandman you because... It's part of the dreaming, and the dreaming actually is ending. This is still going on. I think the House of Whispers is still going on, and Constantine just started, and Lucifer is still going on. So I'm hoping maybe the dreaming's ending because it might be starting over again. Who knows? But Books of Magic has been the, one of my favorite. It's the only title I'm still reading out of the Sandman universe. I'm a little bit behind with the dreaming, uh, but I am catching up uh, slowly as the series is ending. Amazing Spider-Man issue number 40, the fight between Chance and Spider-Man to get Spidey's web shooter. And he does, via cheating a little bit, but he does. And I love how he wants to go after Chance Spider-Man. There's a big battle that goes on. And, and I love how Jonah's like, you know what? This is what you always do. You know, you leave your responsibilities, whatever. And he's like, are you serious? 
He's like, you know what? Fine. He comes back and he sits down and they have this big conversation where they laugh, they cry, they get, you know, they, they get an understanding of each other. They yell at each other. And then of course it ends with them yelling at each other some more. Uh, but at least he kind of puts a period to it. And then we find out that there's a lot of, there's more going on behind the scenes than we know, or then Spider-Man knows. And it all is going into now the next issue. Uh, I've been loving Amazing Spider-Man. This has been going very strong. I, I'm so curious about the um, the person in the background that we still don't know his identity yet. And I'm still guessing it's Harry. I think they've dropped so many hints about him that it has to... It's, if it's not Harry, I'll be surprised. I mean, I'm going to be surprised no matter who it is. But um, I believe it's going to be Harry in the end. Uh some crazy stuff going on with Amazing Spider-Man, but it's going strong. There was only, I think, one arc that was kind of like, it felt like it dragged a little bit, but Amazing Spider-Man has been just so, so good since um, the new um, volume started. We got a lot of X books. I'm looking, we have four X books before we get into the last book of this review. So here we go. Wasn't expecting to read this, but when I saw these two names on the title, I said, if I don't look into it at least, if I don't even look... I'm going to regret it. So Giant Size X-Men, Jean Grey, and Emma Frost. The one shot. Something happens to Storm, and Jean and Emma have to team up and go inside Storm's psyche to find out what's going on. And they do. Very silent issue. Very, very silent. When they're in Storm's mind, there's no talking. No talking at all. And the art's gorgeous in this book. I did like the art in this book. So we find out throughout this whole journey into Storm's mind that she was given a virus. She was attacked and whatever was she was shot with put a machine virus in her and she has a time limit before she dies. She has a countdown in her body that's going on and they come out and they tell the rest of the X-Men and now they have to save Storm. So uh, maybe it's going to be continued to be continued in a, another one shot. Maybe the giant sizes will conclude this story arc. I don't know. I just jumped into this first, this issue because of Jean Grey and Emma and wow, I was very surprised and I enjoyed it. So definitely something to look into. Now, X-Men issue number seven, another standalone story, opens up with Arrow, who is in, who is on Krakoa, and she has been summoned to Crucible. And she's happy, and we go to Cyclops, who's talking to Wolverine about the Crucible, and Wolverine doesn't really like it. Cyclops is kind of conflicted about it. I love that there's a really strong bond again between Cyclops and Wolverine. I like that. And so since Wolverine won't give Cyclops what he's looking for, he goes to Kurt, who's the one that's the most spiritual in the X group. And he talks to Kurt about the Crucible. But what is the Crucible? You know, they're beating around the bush about it. We finally find out what the Crucible is. Apocalypse fighting Arrow. And... Arrow is not a hundred percent mutant, and it could be due to the fact that of what happened with Scarlet Witch, or a bunch of other reasons. And I love how they did throw that in the no more mutants thing. Uh, and I love how the kids are like they hate Scarlet Witch; she's a pretender. So, I, again, it's Marvel solidifying that Scarlet Witch might not be a hundred percent mutant. I don't know, but it was uh, it was weird. I'm guessing Scarlet Witch is not welcome on Krakoa. So. The fight between uh, Arrow and Apocalypse goes down. Arrow, of course, not winning this fight. And it ends with her being killed to be reborn through Krakoa. And apparently in being reborn on Krakoa, she, in dying, loses a piece of her human. And is, I guess, by bringing her back, uh, it, it brings out all of her mutant gene again. And she comes back and she's 100% mutant again. And it's weird, and again, I don't like where they're going with Krakoa, being able to resurrect everyone. So, did Arrow die? Like, is her original body gone, or did she die? They took her original body, healed it, and brought out her mutant gene. We don't know for sure, but I feel like it's one of those things where, oh, it doesn't matter if anyone dies, and it's gonna, we're going to talk about that in the next book, because if you die, you're just going to be reborn again by Krakoa. Same thing happened in the last issue with Mystique. Dead is not dead with mutants anymore. The only dead being 100% dead is through uh, is Shadowcat, Kate, Kitty Pride. 
because for some reason Krakoa won't recognize her as a full mutant, and we still don't know why. But other than Kitty Pride, any mutant can die and be resurrected again. So dead will never be dead for any mutant anymore, and that's weird. It's a reset button for any mutant, and basically they can go on suicide missions and still be brought back to life. Is there a limit? Is this going to... You know, are they really 100% still them after being resurrected through Krakoa? It's weird. And I'm, I'm very interested to see how this plays out in the future with this resurrection thing. It's weird. Let's move into X-Force and then we'll continue the resurrection talk. X-Force issue number 8. Domino's able to track down, fight, and kill her clone. And we find out that this clone is not like the other... Um, task force that was brought that that was able to infiltrate Krakoa using uh just domino skin this one is down to the very dna um like domino and she felt in killing her also she got a bit of her luck back so that means there's more of them out there so she wants to track them all down and stop it and we find out that there's this huge government i don't know if it's government funded or it's funded by somebody who took pieces of domino and are using it to create an army and there's, I feel like the relationship between Colossus and Domino is just getting stronger and stronger because on Krakoa, again, neither one of them could sleep. They spend some time together. Domino, um, I forgot what her name was, is able to track down a huge part of Domino and she goes and takes Colossus with her this time and it's this big train scene. It was amazing. And then at the end of the issue, Domino sacrifices herself a bit to destroy all the clones, destroy the train with all of her DNA, with all of the, uh, I, I believe they they had tissues and, and plasma from her and everything. She was able to wipe all that stuff out. So basically they won't be able to make any more clones using that particular lab. But then in sacrificing herself, she basically is going to die. But she makes Colossus promise her that when they resurrect her, make sure she has all of her memories. Because you could apparently erase memories, you know, bad memories. So she wants all of her memories still, and she wants all of the pain that she's been through remembered as well, or else she wouldn't die. And she's like, he's like, yes, I promise I'll do it. And so she dies. And again, now in the next issue, are they going to bring Domino back with all of the with all of the scars and memories? Again, it's like a reset button. It's like, oh, Domino's dead, but not really. You know, she'll be back in the next issue via resurrection of Krakoa. I don't know how I feel about this with the resurrection thing because it it takes the fear of being killed or dying away in a way. In a way. It's I mean, I think anybody's still gonna be afraid to die. But the fact that Krakoa could heal and bring back anyone it wants or she wants, except Kitty Pride. I don't know. I I'm I'm curious to see how this plays out, and I'm curious to see if any Mutant brought back by Krakoa is 100% still themselves in the end. X-Men Fantastic Four, issue number two. The crossover. The kids are missing, so they think that they were kidnapped. So they reach out to uh, Krakoa. Of course, they they know that they're not there. They figure maybe they stowed away on Kitty Pride's boat. Of course, the Fantastic Four don't believe them because they're still pissed off about the, what happened in the previous issue. So there's a bit of an argument back and forth. They hang up and uh, they make the choice that they're going to go invade Krakoa and get their kids back. Lo and behold, though, their kids aren't on Krakoa. They're on Doom Island because Doom uh, has cut off Kitty Pride from taking the boat back to Krakoa and brought them to Doom Island where he has all of his mutants from Latveria or where any other mutants that are looking for a sanctuary. There's something else going on here. We just don't know yet. And... Um, He's not hurting anybody. You know, he has a dinner with them. He's, he then says he knows what's going on with Franklin and what his father's doing. And he offers to help Franklin kind of get what his father has been hiding back and get it, maybe get his powers back as well. Although it's not what Valeria thinks. She thinks that Doom is just trying to one-up her father. It's it, There's more to it. There's something else that we don't know yet. I'm interested in seeing what that is. But... The Fantastic Four invade Krakoa. They try to find out information about um, their kids. Of course, the X-Men have found Kitty Pride already using Cerebro, so they know where Kitty is. And unfortunately, Invisible Woman gets taken down early. Uh, Reed, kind of to wake her up, opens her mask up. 
allowing Emma to kind of give her a, like a psychic rejolt because she Emma tries to invade um, Sue's mind to take control of her, and he's able to shut the the helmet before Emma takes full control. They find out the coordinates of where the kids are. They get out of there. It was one of those fights that they knew they wouldn't win on Krakoa, so they, they got the information they needed and left. Xavier says, you know what? At this point, the, the Fantastic Four need to learn you know, about what we really stand for, Make put a team together, and go to the coordinates as well. This is going to be one hell of a fight on Doom Island. And then at the end of the issue, we find out that Doom has his own Doom Sentinels set up. This is going to end very badly. Very, very badly and very violently. But of course, it's going to probably end with a team up between the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. I mean, it's it's bound to happen, right? I mean, they won't be at odds the entire time, I wouldn't think, right? Guess we'll find out. Concluding this week is Star Wars issue number three. Luke, Leia, and Lando decide to go back to Cloud City. Lando wants to get back to the city he lost. Luke and Leia, Luke goes back for his lightsaber and Leia goes back to the place where Han Solo was put in carbonite to find out how to reverse uh, the carbonite casing because they're going to go save him at some point. So they split off into different directions. Lando gets a bunch of information from a bunch of different places. Luke finally makes it to the incinerator and it's a huge place. I don't think he's going to find his lightsaber. I, and if he does, it's going to probably be right before it's destroyed completely meaning that <laughs> uh, this is where the yellow lightsaber might come into play possibly leia ends up getting caught and thrown into carbonite yes leia actually was put into carbonite so now it's going to be up to lando and luke to save leia and escape because they get found out and now they're caught in in sky city what's going to happen next all of them are split in different directions. Luke's still looking for his lightsaber. Leia's been captured. Lando's in trouble. Wow. Artwork, strong. Book itself, really, really strong. I like how it does play a little bit off of what's going on with Darth Vader being gone. And uh, we get this other uh, character who's come in now. And she swears revenge against uh, Leia Organa. And um, I feel like there's going to be a part where she shows up. And there's a part with her and Leia where there might be a bit of a fight. Who knows? But this has been a very strong return for Star Wars. I like that we're now in between, uh, what do you call it, 5 and 6 instead of 4 and 5. Uh, so we're getting more story now. Looking forward to seeing where this goes. Strong story. One of my favorites uh, out of the books that I've talked about this week. Definitely check out Star Wars. Very, very strong um, beginning of the arc. And with that, that is the end of this review. 40 plus minutes. Wow. We went for a while, everyone. So 15 books, we did it. We actually were able to hammer them out. As always, don't forget to check out all the links in the description below, all the social media, shootingstaruniverse.com, the Discord if you like to talk video games, Twitch. Lots of big things are going to be coming out all this week. I was going to say all this week, but there's stuff coming out this week. There's stuff coming out for the next couple of weeks. Look forward to an unboxing. I'm probably going to have it up and live on on Wednesday. Uh, to Tuesday night, Frontline, Comic Book Weekly. We will be live 10 p.m. Eastern. Come out. Come talk with us. We're going to be talking comic book and media news, comic book reviews, top fives, and much more. And then don't forget to also check out AEW Aftershock. Brant and I will be talking about Dynamite. The pay-per-view revolution, and there were two AEW darks. Thank you all so much for being here. I will see you all next week with another round of comics to talk about. Till then, take care, keep reading, keep collecting, and I will see you all really soon in the next video.